There it is. Yes, you see? Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big fish. Two fish spot, buddy. <laughs> Come on, fatty. Nice. Good looking fish. Look at that. Oh. There he is. There he is. <laughs> oh, nice fish. Yes. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> Here, give me that net. Give me that net. The Fish in Canada show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures. Fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of the Fishing Canada Show. And all I gotta say is, it's been a long time coming. The reason I say that is because this is an all largemouth bass show which, quite honestly, we don't get a chance to produce all that often. Now, it's not that you, our audience, doesn't like largemouth, nor is it that Pete and I don't like fishing for them. Quite the contrary, we love the chance of hitting the shallows for these green beauties. The main reason we don't get to shoot very many largemouth bass episodes is there aren't a lot of fishing facilities or lodges throughout the country that cater to them. And working closely with tourism organizations like we do, the poor old bucket mouth usually gets the short end of the stick. Let's be honest, in the world of Canadian freshwater fishing lodges, the species list is pretty much dominated by walleye, northern pike, trout, and to some extent, smallmouth bass. On Canada's west coast, you'd be hard pressed to find a lodge that isn't ruled by the king, the Chinook salmon. On the east coast, Atlantic salmon still have a grip on the fishing lodge industry. There's also a strong brook trout segment out east, and now we can include the latest on that list, the striped bass. Luckily, there's the odd lodge that at least offers largemouth fishing as an option on their species list. We're very thankful for this, as they are an awesome fish to target. For this episode, we're fishing some of the backwaters of the mighty Lake Nipissing, and in particular, the middle and western portions. Yes, this massive area is mostly known, again, for walleye, pike, smallies, and not to be forgotten, trophy muskie, but it also has a fantastic population of largemouth bass. From the main lake to the back bays to all the incoming and outflowing rivers and creeks, Nipissing truly is a largemouth bass factory. For the main portion of this episode, Pete and I are going to attack a backwater section off the main lake. And trust me, there's miles of it. We're using a variety of plastic baits, the time is midsummer, and the weather is hot. We're also going to show you some never seen before footage where Ange and I hit a small channel that meets the main lake, but unfortunately for us, this was during a cold front. Fortunately for you, you get to see how we deal with these often nasty, unwanted, and yet more often than not, unavoidable conditions. For this, we had to dive deep into the thick stuff with our flipping and pitching gear to coax those lethargic, yet still catchable, green ones. But first, let's start out with some nice, warm shorts and t-shirt weather. That's my kind of bass fishing. The largemouth bass is a funny little creature. While most people equate these fish with gigantic, shallow lily pad fields, or areas so thick with weeds that an angler can hardly pull a bait through. But they're much more than that. Although the situations Anne's just mentioned definitely do hold largemouth, they're not the only places to look. As you can see here, there's more open water than thick weeds. Largemouth love hanging around rocky areas, especially if there's a bit of wood and or vegetation mixed in. There it is. It's a good one, buddy. Scream at me if you need that. He's swimming at me. I'd say cast out where I got him. <laughs> because you're gonna, they might have him cranked up already. If we can get him cranked up. Little wee guy, tiny. All right, all right. Okay. Let's see if we can get them fired up. What we're going to try to do is find, find fish in this heat of the day and see if we can get them biting and biting and kind of get them craving for baits. Hopefully we can do that. One of the interesting things about this spot, we fished it, I would say, probably a half a dozen times over the last several years and never really took the time to, to see exactly what it was that was holding these fish in. Well, we had a couple of days 
uh, to come in early and just check it out. And man, we're gonna share with you what, what we're finding here. And it is, it is just incredible. Hey, you see? Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big fish. Two fish spot, buddy. <laughs> Come on out of there. <laughs> Come on, fatty. See? You see? Ooh, that's a big one. I'm gonna lock it. Lock her up, buddy. That's a big fish. Isn't it? I don't know, but he's swimming good. <laughs> I think it is. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get the net just in case. I want a net one. I want a net one today. I want a net more than one today. No kidding. No kidding. That feels like a real good fish, Pete. Oh yeah, smally. Yeah. No, no, is no it? large one. He was into weeds. Look, oh, he's still yeah. he's still coughing out weeds. Nice looking fish. Not huge, but not huge. What he's gonna do, bud? He'll do. Good work. That's like the, yeah, that's nice. That's good. That's, that's nice. nice chunky what fish. We need right there. That fish was shallow. Yep. I hate, I hate to I tell saw you. That. You said, you said we followed that guy in here. You said, you said he wasn't going to catch them all, so good well, for you. Good stuff. Good looking fish, right? Eh? Mm. Northern Ontario largemouth. They're just Boy, like, he ever smack it good, too. Did he? Yeah. That's a good sign. What's that looking like? Small. It's a bass, it, though. Is it the right species? I think it's the right species. Yeah, little guy. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Easy, little girl. Come on. <laughs> My line was straightening out. Didn't feel a bite or anything. The line was just straightening. You're just starting out. to run with it. Yeah. You oh. swung right to New York with that sucker, didn't oh, you? Oh, I wasn't going to take any chances <laughs> with that. You? Yep. Yeah, no. Not a total ute, but. No. Just entering puberty. <laughs> you pretty. He wasn't going anywhere. No. <laughs> you drilled him. Is that you wound up that hook set like a baseball player? <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere, that boy. Look at you eating my claws. Oh my god. That little fish ate that big ugly bait. Yeah. As we said earlier in the show, we're gonna take you back in time and to another section of Lake Nipissing. Although we're still fishing in the dead of summer, we're fishing in the midst of a nasty high sky cold front. When confronted with conditions like this, we know full well that our most successful techniques will be slow, steady, and directly in the junk. Two fish spot, buddy. <laughs> Come on out of there. Come on out Come of there. Come on, fatty. He's Big, chunky. Chunky, but it's like another football. short chunky. Look oh, at good looking is. fish. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> well, hit the boat. Nice. Look at the, look at the gut on these things. <laughs> man, the healthiest oh, man. stock of fish we've seen, I think. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's a short fish. <laughs> that's look a, that's... A, look at how white he is. He is all meat. Wow. Nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah. Like, imagine we get a five pounder, like it's, or I say a twenty incher. It's oh, a be twenty crazy. incher. A twenty incher net would be would be huge. It'd be it's six pounder. Yeah, that would be absolutely huge. All right, in you go. <laughs> Good one. On the jig. On the jig. I love jig fishing. What uh, what we resorted to now is uh, throwing some. Uh, some old conventional flipping jigs into this real short grass on the outside of the cane. And I tell you, that is an exciting way to fish. You never know, every time you throw something in there, right? Oh. You're just anticipating that tick, tick. And, and the jig is a big, it is a big fish bait. So. Oh, for sure, for sure. You'll get small ones on it, but you got a potential for a giant. Yeah. That one was in a little bit tighter. He was in just behind the pads. In the grass or some yeah. pads too? In still? the pads, yeah. yeah. Here's a great tip when you're out there slinging jigs and plastics into the ultra heavy cover. If you sense you just missed a bite or a fish, always cast flip or pitch back immediately to the exact same area. If it wasn't a fish, no harm done. However, if it was, you just showed an excellent sense of feel and instinct. 
Come on, big dog. Give her all you got. Okay. There you go. So look at that thing. Oh, nice again. <laughs> He's wow. not quite as fat in the no. tail, eh? No. A little, little leaner, but still nice. Gorgeous nice. fish. Wow. Boy, when you, when you hook him like that right there, right through the nose, but in the heavy stuff, yeah, you got a good hook set, and he's probably not going to get off. Wow. Mm. Gorgeous fish. Look there. Look at that. Just quality. Super quality fish here. Wow, they're all shaking their head because they're angry. They don't like us. <laughs> you would be too. <laughs> That's so much fun. There he is. Oh, 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 oh. What do you got? He's in there. He's out way in there. You get the adrenaline flowing, I'll tell you that. Oh, 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 oh. What do you got? He's in there. He's out way in He's there. He's in there. That was right in the middle of that stuff. Pulling motor on 10. <laughs> That's how far in they are, though, buddy. Mm hmm. That was way back. Yeah, on a mega bug. Nice. On a bug, yeah. A lot of green there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pure green. Man, did he ever hit deep in that yeah. stuff. You know, sometimes that's the problem, eh? There's so much good cover here. Where do you where do you stop and start? Oh, you know? It's there literally miles. This type of fishing isn't for everybody. I mean, that's the other thing too. We've been doing it, Pete and I have been doing this for years since oh, we were yeah. kids. So for us it's second nature, but it's a pretty daunting task when you ask somebody to come in to this thick of cover and, and start to divin and dabbing. It, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do, but once you get into a rhythm of pitching and flipping into that stuff, man, oh man, can they ever, whoo, they can get the adrenaline flowing, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he came right from, right <laughs> in the middle. I, he did I, the old I did suicide. Did overhand eh? right into it. <laughs> you know what? We're here. Yeah, we're stuck now, right? Yeah. Let's try a couple of shots, I guess. When Pete and I hit this type of heavy cover, we don't mess around with regular tackle. We bring in the heavy equipment. Seven foot plus heavy action rods, coupled with bait cast reels spooled up with either 40 to 50 pound braid or 20 to 25 pound floral carbon line. It's essential here. As you can see, once you feel a bite, you gotta smack them hard and then haul that bad boy up and out of the cover. There he is. That's a lot of water moving there, brother. <laughs> That's a lot of water moving there. Come on, cowboy. Bring him in. Boy, that's <laughs> nice. like a workout. That's a nice one. That's like a workout, buddy. There it is. <laughs> how fat that fish is. Jump, jump, jump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. That's the one. It's You're getting fat. better now. Yeah. She moved a lot of a lot of weeds and pads to... He was back there, too, get huh? Get that jig. Oh. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> that is work. I, I love it. Uh, you know what? You just you take a chance with a, with a jig and this kind of stuff. You know, you, it's a, the perfect oh. bait to use. But you take a chance on it, even making it to the bottom without picking weeds up, because they're uh, you know they do grab weeds, etc. They're not the most weedless of weedless lures. But when you get that one drop like that, it hit the water, hit to the bottom, and pfft, all the pads moved. Look at that. You know he's there. Yeah, you know he's there. You just set the hook and you just try your <laughs> hardest to, to get him out. I love it. That's a good fish. That's a good one. Ah. Hey, you take what? How many flips? We just did 100 casts and flips and pitches. And, yeah, just and that one spot. And one... That's, that's the thing about this type of fishing, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, you're not going to hit a pocket that has 10 fish in it. This is not about schooling fish. These are all individual animals that have got a territory staked out. And the disadvantage for us is we don't know where that territory begins or ends. So the only way you're gonna find out is to put your nose on the bank and just start working it, and then boom. Yeah. Next thing you know. Yeah, we got him. The reason we got that fish 
It's because we fished the other side of this, and it was, we got, we picked up a fair amount of bites, a decent amount of bites. Once we got past a certain point, there was nothing. We said, okay, let's go back out to the opposite side. We got carried away and started checking some other stuff. We got one little wee fish. We come back to the opposite side, which is almost exactly the exactly, same. Exactly, yeah. And boom, we got a fish. So we go down here and complete this. We might get a couple more good ones. So that's something to keep in mind. That's what they call a pattern. Stay on that same sort of idea and work it out hard. Today's hotspot is a fantastic largemouth bass area on Lake Nipissing. The waypoint on your screen gets you there. The entire west end of Lake Nipissing, as well as all its connecting rivers, offers some outstanding bass fishing throughout the season. For this episode, we used a variety of bottom bouncing baits like soft plastics and flippin' jigs. Black or dark green seem to be the best colors. When you find an area that looks good, dissect it with fast baits and then dig deep with the slower stuff. This system has worked well for us. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. There he is. <laughs> oh, nice fish. Oh, yes. Whoa, oh, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. Here, give me that net. Give me that net. Lake Nipissing has a huge diversity in its largemouth bass habitat. From the thick, overgrown channel edges to the classic rock, wood, and weed areas that we're back into now. This place is a phenomenal bass fishing destination. Be the one, baby. I'm going to try and get jump, in behind jump. you. It might be better. Yeah, go in there. I'm going in behind you. My line, my line took off on the edge. It did it, really? My line was going straight away from me. It was the best. That might be a good fish, buddy. I'm going to play him like it's a good one, even though it might not be, <laughs> uh, too. Scream at me. I got the net ready. Oh, nice. Got some weeds on him. I got him. It's a nice sure? one. I don't think you're lifting that. Don't think you're lifting that, buddy. No, I don't want to lift him. Yeah, we'll know. Thank you. Thank you, son. Nice. But my line just took off on me. I would love it. That's the best bass bite ever. Your line just starts straight. Ooh, as soon as it hit the bottom. You might a big have fish? found the spot, eh? Yeah, we might be on it. I think we did find it, or one of the spots. This is a spot from a couple of years ago. There he goes. Once we get him cranked up, yeah, then it's like, now. look, oh, I go. He's off. He's oh, off. no way. I lost him. Oh, man. So we had an old waypoint from a, a last trip here, and uh, that's the one that's working for us. So yesterday's stuff, you know, it might come on. We were here in the evening yesterday, so it might be a little later bite for us to go back to the shallow stuff or whatever. Might be, huh? Yeah. Always, things always change in the, in the day. You have to keep that in mind. And if, the fish are, if you have a bunch of fish that are going, keep working the area because they're somewhere around, especially largemouth, they're home bodies. They don't like to, uh, they don't like to roam around too much. They're, they're kind of lazy-ish. Especially stay, in this area. Yeah, and they'll stay with food. Yeah. There he is. <coughs> in that motor though, isn't he? Oh yeah, aren't they all? <laughs> they like that. Oh, nice fish. Good one? Yeah, grab me the net there. There, I'm gonna net him. I got him, thanks. Three boonder? Maybe. Yes. Oh, yeah. Whoa, oh buddy. Whoa. Now, here, give me that net. Give me that net. <laughs> give me that friggin' net. He, he swam out of that. Out. He swam out of that sucker real easy, didn't he? Nice. You know what? That fish had me fooled. No kidding. That's why he said, give me that net. <laughs> <laughs> when they swim out of the net that size, you, you know get, you're in trouble. Eh? You get too many chances. Yeah. Now, that guy kind of came out of the open there, Pete. Yeah. Well, Wasn't this is casting. where you and me and the guys were sitting. This is a, basically, that's, that's the area. That's basic spot, isn't it? There's a bunch of different clumps, I think. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's weird. I think they're just swimming in and out of them. But I'll tell you what, it's a magnet. It's holding them. <laughs> nice fish. Good looking large. Short and fat. Yeah, I love it. Kind of like me. I love those species, man. That species, those right there. Three, you know, cool. three pounders. You'd have a riot with but, a bunch of those, eh? Oh, God. Heyday. You drill it right as soon as you dropped it, or you have to work it? Uh, 
I worked it a bit. Yeah, that's a nice size of fish. That's right what we were getting the other day, boys. Yeah. Swam right out of the net. <laughs> Had me a little worried. Probably just loaded with fish. I think it's what we said yesterday. That that setter hump. Yeah. That's got all the weed around it and all the nice clumpy stuff on top. Yeah. That's the table. Yeah. And I think they're just swimming around. Yeah. I think they're coming in. They probably these fish probably live all throughout here, including that back bay. Sure they do. And they just come out here and feed. And, and you know, the other day we were in here. I think at prime time. Yeah, we you know, were. At dinner time. We were definitely here at prime. Something very interesting happened here today. If you compare both fishing situations we were in, that's a beautiful sunny summer day, as opposed to a sneaky post cold front day, you'll see that the cold front fish were actually bigger. I'd personally take that cold front sack of fish hands down over the others. And that's due to having a little bit of intel about our prey. We knew those summer fish would be active and roaming around weeds, wood, rocks, and even open water. We figured they'd be scattered, so our fishing style was fast and furious. We also knew that the cold front fish would be hunkered down in the heavy stuff and sitting pretty much stationary in perfect little fish holding pockets. Here, you need to go slow and low. Same fish species, same lake, but two totally different attitudes. To get to some outstanding largemouth as well as smallmouth bass fishing, take Highway 400 north to Highway 69. Then turn east on 64 towards Alban. Stay on Highway 64 through Noelville. Next turn right on Memquisit Road, which takes you to Memquisit Lodge. They offer both American and housekeeping plans at either the main lodge or one of their cabins. They prepare wholesome, homemade meals. No one leaves feeling hungry. Looking for a shore lunch? It's easy to set up. But best of all is the tranquility during your stay. It gets no better. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Close captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. 